All right. Well, we're going to do a short clip on a topic we were debating kind of uh, today, and we thought we should just film it um, because it's an interesting topic, I think, for men. Um, And it's on the term adultery. And I started digging into this um, for multiple reasons, but I think a lot of Christians have this maybe view of adultery synonymous with sexual immorality, where mm-hmm. it's just kind of this encompassing term of all sexual sin uh-huh. outside of marriage, basically. And what it made me realize is there's some diff- there's some nuances there. Absolutely. And so adultery is specifically the definition is sleeping with a married woman. And so when you read, number one, this is probably controversial, but the Old Testament, you know, specifically there's a command against adultery. But there isn't a command against sexual immorality, fornication, as there is in the New Testament. Exactly. And it's, yes. just, it's definitely interesting. Yes, and then to take it further, um, so we're trying to say the Old Testament had a operation for men in marriage, the amount of wives, concubines even, that was way different from the New Covenant, right? Mm-hmm. And so a lot of people will say adultery, and what will they actually mean? What, what what do we see cropping up in the church all the time when they say adultery? What well, do they when, actually when mean? Christ says, what, if, what, if is, a man what looks, is the church's misconception of that term? They just think two unmarried people sleeping together, right? I would say a most lot of the time, time yep. dude. A lot of time. I actually asked in a friend group chat on that, and that was based. That was the one definition I got. Mm. And that's not what's going on. Yeah, and that's not the definition. Okay. No, it's a married person. It's a mm. married person. It's not someone who's single. So, like you had brought up, like. It's specifically it, a man with a married woman. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Or possibly you lusting after a married woman, even if you're single. Right? Mm-hmm. Does that include that? That too? would that if would be what New Jesus Testament, Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes. That's right. what I meant. Right. And yeah. there's that verse that Christ And so said, yeah, that's right. what that that would then so that, that had me thinking, and this is what part of our conversation. So Jesus in the New Testament, you know, sets these new standards of like stuff that's in your mind is what's happened, or you're also seeing as if you actually did the action. Okay, so actions are on par with thought. Yeah, yeah. And so in your head, then you're reading if you got this different view of adultery, uh, or if you got this incorrect view of adultery, you're thinking, um, if I just look at any woman, you know, lustfully, it's considered a sin or considered adultery, which or is considered not. a sil- yeah, right. considered adultery. Which and is, then now, if you understand it in the right definition, it's if you look at a married woman lustfully, that's adultery. Right. right. Now, let's take apart it further, right? So, when you lust, right? So, sexual morality, the root word there, I believe, is fornication in the Greek, which comes from the word furnace, which means to burn with mm-hmm. desire. There's a consuming factor there, which we're supposed to be consumed by what? The love of Christ. Huh? Yes. And so, if something what? else is consuming us, what does that become? It becomes idolatry. Exactly. It becomes idolatry. So at the core of lust, we have idolatry. So going into this further, I think for young men who are very visually inspired, there's an element of fantasy that goes on. And this is where I think we cross the line, because obviously you're not going to be able to pick a desirable mate without asking yourself if she's attractive to you. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I believe with this discussion, we should be giving people, young men and women, relief from the idea that they're making a sinful they're be sinning by saying, I think that person's attractive. Now, mm-hmm. if they say that that person's attractive and then start imagining and fantasizing sexual acts in, in detail, and this is consuming parts of before they go to bed or in the morning or when they see them, that becomes lust in the form of fornication, which is a form of idolatry. You're perverting the idea of the sexual act, right? So it's important to understand the nuance there mm-hmm. that exists, right? It's not adultery to look at a woman that you might want to make your wife or approach with the idea that, you know what, I think this person's, I mean, let's be real here, you're not going to have a background on everybody to say, I like this person's, you're going to see them and you're going to be like, this is the way God made me, I think they're attractive, I'm going to go talk to them. Usually that's the way it is for a man, nine times out of ten. So is there anything wrong with that? No. No. It seems not. I would say no. Let's let's talk about if that if Jesus said it differently, and how would this change then, or would it change at all if Jesus said, um, looking with lust, like instead of saying adultery, he said just fornication in the in the Greek. Would that change anything? I think he's giving special precedence to marriage, mm-hmm. um, and I think that you know we talked about gay being a sin that's in a different sort of bracket because it identifies a person in a stronger way than, say, gluttony can, you know, maybe. Uh, 
I think when I think about marriage and why he said that is because I think it wraps up sexual morality too. Um, because if it was sexual immorality, it would leave out adultery, which would just be like, well, I guess I could say that a married woman is attractive then. At that point well, it's time, different right? because you have rather to rather res- than saying, yeah, I can't say, that, I can't even begin you that. Leave process. out adultery. Adultery is a subset of sexual immorality. Yeah, I would say that it would be the most important part because, like, if if she's an unmarried woman, I'm just saying she's attractive to myself because I want to approach her. That's okay, but if she's a married woman and I say she's attractive, and you know that's where that mm-hmm. issue happens, then you're not treating marriage in the right way, right? And that's yeah. one of the most sacred unions. So I think it might be a little different than sexual morality, but maybe not. You know, maybe if you if you said adultery well, it's was a, a different because it's a bond. Like yeah. you want to respect people that are married or in a relationship. I think so. So you don't want to like, I mean, you wouldn't want to be treated that way. I know I probably wouldn't. Yeah. You know. I mean, if if you have a very attractive wife, you can unknow that she's going to be looked at that way. I mean, 100%. but there's a difference between like guys fantasizing about it and like spending a bunch of time on that. Yeah, where that's that's not respectful, you know. And I I wouldn't want someone doing that no. to me, so I wouldn't do that to someone else's wife yeah. or girlfriend or whatever. So yeah, I think it's important to sort of like the off limit zone. You yeah. Know? yeah, and I think it's developing. A, and that's just the rank ordering issue that people always run into. Sin is above another. It's like, well, yeah, but how the sacredness of marriage stands out. I'd say, right. So know, if you're at the gym and you see someone that's attractive, or you hear someone, I think like you brought this up. A lot of Christian guys might feel like if they even have the thought, you know, then then that's a problem, and then it might lead to something for someone else. You know, it's not easy to see someone that you find very attractive and not have like a have like a response to it but you definitely you don't have to go to like thinking about sexual encounters mm-hmm. with that person that's a little could be you know a little perverted so mm-hmm. i mean even if whether or not because you don't actually know this person or anything exactly. you don't know what they are who they are purely, what they've done or what mm-hmm. they haven't done or anything else like that think about your own you know well-being at that point in time um apart from them being attractive. So it's just not a healthy thing to do. And um, I think for a lot of those guys that are out there, it's okay to find someone attractive and to think that they are attractive and to to mm-hmm. to, to be in this, maybe go up and talk to her, you know, see what she's... And if she's married, don't. Yeah, yeah. there you go. That's, that's and don't limits. fantasize into the places that you shouldn't. Don't pervert sexuality in your own mind before you've done any of that stuff. Like It's not for you to do. Yeah, and I will I, say if you do start thinking about that stuff, it's not a good way to to go talk to anybody. No, man, it's gross. Yeah, and I think and it just goes in with like greed too. Like if you're trying to be someone's friend just to get something out of them, it kind of falls in the same line of that. It's like you're not being authentic. You have this like preconceived agenda going on, which is gross. And I think there's an interesting aspect too on how Proverbs he talks over and over again about. Uh, an adulterous woman mm-hmm. like tempting you, yeah. yeah. And he doesn't talk about a single woman. It's so it's I think it's always a married woman when he's Is talking. It really, uh, when, you know, it's funny hmm. though. Like when you think about the circumstances of like a like a bored married woman. Yeah, you know, like we well, that's that what I was going to like, to continue that. That's what. So I read a book um, that I would not recommend reading. It's called The Game. <laughs> and so this, this was this was like five six years ago. My boss told me about it and. What was interesting? These guys were pickup artists, and it was a story on their li- on this this guy's lives. And it was uh, spoiler alert: their life like fell into shambles, and their lifestyle was just a mess. And that guy doesn't won't even give interviews on the book anymore because he realizes it's so bad. But anyway, Dang. he was explaining in the book how actually married women for them were the easiest uh, targets. Oh yeah, and so they don't get enough attention. They're off limits. Yeah, the single girls they'd have to work hard to get. Whereas yeah, they're the getting single, all the, the, the married women were just like easy. Yep. So I would understand the Proverbs thing yeah. then, you know, and especially because married women under those circumstances were expected to conduct themselves a certain way. So they're probably in and around circumstances where if she was unmarried, it'd be like, that's not okay. You can't be alone with that woman. You know, it's not okay. Oh, she's married. Yeah, go, go do the chores or whatever. And then it's like, okay, now we can see where there's an issue mm-hmm. because now you're in and around a female that may be married, but just because of the proximity of closeness, because of the expectations that are associated with the married woman not to do anything, things end up happening. Yeah. You know, I could see that. Oh, it's definitely. Like Joseph and Potiphar's wife and... That stuff yeah. happens, you know. Yep. Definitely does, especially if you're attractive male. Get the Joseph out, baby. <laughs> Get the Joseph <laughs> out, man. Sometimes well, it's all you can do. Well, that was a good one. And yeah. I think that was a great topic, especially within like the 
be, being precise within the language. Yes, and, mm-hmm. and what that what the language means, because a lot of times we'll say one thing. Adultery is not the same thing as yes. as um. Uh, what was it? Adultery and sexual immorality. Adultery. Yeah, those are not the same things. Mm-hmm. They're different. There's specificity there for a reason, yeah. and let's appreciate it. Yeah. Let's yeah. not be these, you know, interchangeable. Yeah. Just let's not and turn the, words uh, into to goo. Yeah, their their words are beautiful and they're yeah. precise. And for the guys that are going out and that are single, like yeah, if you see someone that's attractive, go talk to her. Exactly. You're Boom. not sinning according to the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Peace. <laughs>